Greetings, this is Tom Knapp, working on the University of Florida's Advanced Beekeeping Program. Today I'm going to be talking about Varroa sampling. I've opened up a colony of bees, I've gone through the colony, and I have confirmed that I have the queen in this cage. Now this is important because I don't want to sample uh, and kill the queen. Now my preferred method of monitoring uh, Varroa mites is using an alcohol wash method. I'm going to show you that today. Uh, ideally, it'd be great to sample every month, but certainly you need to do it at least six times a year. As I said, it's October, and, or excuse me, September 24th, and at this time of year, with a strong colony, I would expect the Varroa mites to be um, um, active, uh, especially with the amount of brood that I'm going to show you here. Now, I typically raise honeybees for fun. I'm not a pollinator guy, I'm not a honey producing guy, and so my threshold might be a little bit different for uh, what I do versus other people. Um, and what I'm going to be looking at is making sure I'm sampling from a strong colony, that I'm looking at it uh, at least six times a year, and this is an example of that. Um, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to shake off bees into this bucket off of the brood. And I've already identified which are my brood. Uh, portions. So what I'm going to do is lift this up and if you'll notice I've got bees covering brood here and bees covering brood here. So I'm going to shake them off gently. You can see that brood and the brood here. I'll do that from another frame as well that I'd already identified with bees. Lots of brood, lots of brood. See all the brood there? And the reason we do it off of the brood is because that's where the bees are located. Now I know in my sampling device that that black line in there is half a cup of bees. So what I'm going to do is put them down at the bottom, scoop until I have about a half a cup. We'll let some fly out. Okay, I've got about a half a cup right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and put them alcohol wash. Now what's going to happen here is this will kill the bees Start timing. and I'm going to do this for about a full minute. And the reason we're doing it this way is to make sure that we've got all the um, Varroa mites coming off the bees. Now the alcohol obviously is going to kill all the bees, but it'll kill the Varroa mites too. Now just as a uh, reminder that a half cup is about 300 bees. So I'm looking for me and for my economic threshold I would really like to see something less than uh, two bees per hundred. So that means that when I'm done here and I'm taking a look at the Varroa, if I've got 300 bees here, it'd be six or less. If I've got more than that, then the economic threshold may indicate that I want to use a, um, uh, a cultural control, uh, environmentally sound control, or go ahead and uh, use the um, uh, a brood break or a chemical, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead because I've been shaking this for just over a minute now and I'm going to drain all this back over the Neat little thing I've got here Is my bucket and I can just strain all this right through and easily count. Unfortunately, I dumped the bees in, but already I can see that I have in here 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 21, and that is this 
colony is begging for varroa control based just on that. So what I'll be doing is, is using Formic Pro, which I have, Apivar, Apigard. Uh, I typically do not use oxalic acid, but this is exactly the reason that we do varroa monitoring is to find out. So again, appreciate uh, the work from the um, University of Florida Extension. Uh, Mary and for uh, Dr. Jamie Ellis for teaching me and reaffirming some of the things I know about Varroa. So we'll be treating this. Important thing to remember is not only treating, but coming back afterward to see what the impact of the treatment was. And I'll be doing that too. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.